Hello folks, this is Johnny again and welcome back to my in-depth mixing tutorial series. As ever, if you like what you see, then please consider subscribing and also check out the links in the description to check out my own music and whatnot. So we already did some rough EQ. Where's my console? As you can see, just some basic stuff in here, some top shelving and mid-range cutting where it's needed and whatnot. And we also took care of the low end for the most part, so the bass has its place and the rhythm guitars are a little bit better in the mid-range and also the kick has a better thump. Now the next step would probably be compression. So we get into a little bit more detailed stuff right now. The jumps especially could benefit from some more punchiness. Let's just check it out. Yeah, at this point, although we already did a lot of EQ, it still sounds kind of rough around the edges and compression will be the next step there. And you probably also notice with the vocals, even though they are kind of low in volume in the mix, they are still very nicely audible and you can hear them clearly, although they are a little bit quiet. And that just goes to show how much proper EQ balance uh, can really help with clarity in your mix and whatnot. So, but let's stick with the drums for now. Let's do some very quick basic moves. Again, keep it simple. So first of all, I want to have a different compressor in here, not the 1176 on our close mics, but rather the, wait, replace module with this one, PC4K. Again, just use whatever compressor you have available. And the point I want to focus on in this one is, again, keep it simple. Don't, don't get too lost in details and whatnot. Just start with some very basic moves. Slow attack, the slowest this one can go is 30 milliseconds. 50 milliseconds for the kick drum might be better because the low end thump just takes that extra couple of milliseconds to build up. And given the compressor a little bit slower attack time, will let these lower frequencies through a little bit better. And this is something we could experiment with later on. With the attack time on the compressor, you can really control how much the low end punches through or how tight it gets. But we'll get there when we get there. For starters, let's make it simple. Slow attack, fast release. I personally would like to start with 50 milliseconds on both. So for attack time, 50 milliseconds is slow, but for release time, 50 milliseconds is fast. Uh, this one just goes to 100 milliseconds on the release time, but that's okay. That's okay for now. For starters, let's go with a gain reduction of about minus 6 dB and just listen from there. Okay, just something like this for starters. This gives us a nice first amount of punch. And directly on the inserts of the channels, you don't actually need that much compression. If you want to have a very punchy sound, it's better to do that on FX channels or as scent effects. We'll get to that in a little bit. But now let's go on with the snare. So let's pull this one down here and let's also replace it with the other one. Let's do the same thing. Slow attack, fast release. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Am I stupid or what? I forgot about the, the ratio here. Of course, a higher ratio, four to one is a good starting point. <laughs> You just notice how it tightens up and it doesn't, it's not as poofy anymore. Now, again, let's do the same for the snare. Oh, 
Oh, this snare definitely does not need a lot of compression. It it sounds very punchy, very quick. Okay, but let's keep it like that for now. Good. Now, you may also wonder where should you compress before or after the EQ? Well, let's think it through. With compression, you don't only get a nice punch in the drums, but you also get control of the peaks, those transients. So when you compress first, and then you do these kinds of EQ moves after the fact, you're actually accentuating those transients again. So your transient control might not be that great when you EQ after the compressor. And then later on, you will have to figure out how do I get control of all these crazy spikes without losing punch of the drums. That's why I personally like to compress after the EQ. The downside to compressing after the EQ may be that it sounds a little bit more choked. But in order to mitigate that, you could still add another EQ after the compressor and add again what you may lose through compression. For example, low end is kind of a victim of compressor, especially with faster attacks. And when you notice you lose some low ends, then just add another EQ after the compressor and just boost that low end a little bit. That's not going to create any crazy transients, but it will still fix what you may lose in the process. Okay, now hi-hats. I don't really want to compress. I like to keep that pretty natural and also it has a lot of tail and I don't really want to increase that kind of decay because that will just wash up the whole mix. So I'm just gonna leave it. The toms definitely need something going on. So with toms, mm, I usually like to go not really that punchy, but more for for dynamic control. Let's try the other compressor first. Um, yeah, let's keep it at like one millisecond, but fast release. Okay, and I want to see that my peaks here on the toms don't go completely crazy. So I want to have a part where the toms are really smacking a whole bunch. Okay, in parts like these, I like to check the meter. As you can see there on that head, it went berserk. So let's see if the compressor helps that. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, the toms definitely need some gating. Um, 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 uh, where do we have dynamic C1 gate? Get that no, wait, 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 I don't actually want to have that one. Um, delete again, I want to get the other one in there. Here's Sonnet's gate. 
I want to have that one in here because that gives me a sidechain filter. And that's what I need right now. Okay, so let's cut a bunch of that low end. So the gate is only triggered by these really hard attacks. And then we need attack time very fast. A hold, let's put it around yeah, 50 milliseconds. So the, the gate doesn't start working for 50 milliseconds. And that way we leave enough of that thumpy low end through. So they still stay powerful and then release time also not too fast. So they don't just choke off. So around 400 milliseconds is usually a good starting point. Yeah, see, already more control. And we turn it off. Major tail. That can, that tail of the tons can really muddy up your low end and put a lot of uncontrolled stuff in there. So gating the toms it's really a good controlling feature. Of course, now here in the beginning part, where the toms are played more softly, we need to watch out that the gate doesn't actually choke those off. Okay, that's still good. Okay, overheads. I don't really like compressing the overheads as such um, because I, I don't want to increase the tail of the crashes and all these symbols because that can create a lot of washiness in the whole upper range of your mix and uh, so then your mix can lose a lot of clarity. So instead, um, ma, 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 you know what? Let, let's just take a listen to the overheads. Okay, sometimes in the overheads, you could have a lot of that rattle from the snare drum. Um, it's a matter of opinion if you want to keep it in there. I mean, in the context of the mix, it won't really be that audible. If you wanted to have a little bit of control over that, then you can do that with compression. Give it a fast attack and fast release. And you'll notice... Yeah, in this one, the rattle isn't really there, so it's not a problem. Um, I personally don't really like it. I want to have a very condensed snappy snare sound and not have this rattling going on. So we don't really need a compressor in here, but wait, let, let's just get the FX chain in here. So in this one, we can load other up plugins right smack in the middle of our pro channel. And I just want to put a limiter in there. So dynamics. Here, like L1 limiter. And all I want, really, really want to do is limit the snare and the kick and whatever may create very high spikes in the overheads. Okay. So that way we already get control over some of the transients. Now, room mics is such a thing, you could slam them a whole lot and get a very, very nitty gritty sound. It could potentially also again create a lot of wash through the cymbals. 
Uh, so we need to be careful with this one. Definitely need something. So let's just use the 1176 module. This one actually sounds really good. Yeah, in this one you can hear kind of that rattling in the in the snare. And it's pretty much completely gone with this compressor. But I don't want to compress too hard because those cymbals just uh, wash everything up. I, I don't like that. This compressor is pretty weird. Even though the needle is barely doing anything, you can hear it's compressing a whole lot already. I'm actually just gonna leave it at that. And now I'm going to insert the FX chain again after the compressor and add a limiter again. Okay, you may notice with this limiter we lose a lot of that attack and punch, but then again, the snare is going to have enough punch and attack by itself. And with some parallel compression we will do in a bit, we will have more than enough punch. So at least for this mix, we don't need that much of that attack from coming from the overheads and the room. Now in other mixes with other drum kits, uh, it may work better to have all of these different tracks work together to create that kind of punch. But for this one, it's okay if we shave off some of those transients. Actually, I want to try the different, the other compressor on here, just to see what what happens. You know, not all compressors are co created equal, so we gotta try it out. I think I actually prefer this one on the snare. As you're working on compression, make sure that your input gain and, or that your output gain uh, still matches your previous volume balance. Here for example, yeah, I already messed that up, so I'm gonna check again my volume balance without the compressor. I'm gonna turn it on. Far too quiet, so let's turn it up. Okay, okay, something like that. Um, actually right away, let's just stick with the drums for now. So you notice there are quite some spikes going on. And of course we want to have more control over these transients. Although it's still better than if I would put compressor before the EQ, but still um, we're gonna run into some trouble later on down the line with these kinds of crazy transients. So, uh, 
saturation is your friend in that case. Because saturation doesn't kill uh, the punch, it rather adds punch, and it's going to nicely control all of that transient stuff. So, check out here. Let's stick with the snare for now. So this Pro Channel already loaded up a tube saturator. Let's see what else we have in here. <laughs> it comes with a soft tube saturation knob, my pretty much favorite thing. And it also comes with tape emulator. Whoa, so that's, that's good. That's, that's really good. So let's just try this out. What's up with my volume balance again? Okay, no, in this configuration, I have far too much of that rattling going on. I think we're gonna stick with the other compressor after all. Okay, here you can very nicely see how saturation is your friend. Just look at the meter. See, I'm, I'm going crazy with the input here on my tape saturation and the meter is not going any louder. But we don't lose any punch. We could try the same with the tube saturation instead of tape saturation. So this one has even two different kinds of tubes. Let's just go berserk with the drive and see what it sounds like. Okay, so you could probably hear tube two creates a lot more higher frequencies and distorts a lot more. Whereas T1 sounds a little bit, it doesn't distort as much. And it also cuts off the peaks quite a bit harder. So I'm gonna stick with T1 probably. And then we can compare which one we like better. I think I'm gonna stick with the tube saturation. Quite like that. Let's do the same for the kick drum. On this one, I probably wanna go with the second tube. So it rather creates more high end click. Let's turn up the input because it doesn't have a lot of input.
Yeah, let's not go berserk here with the cheap saturation so it doesn't really overly distort. I just wanted to touch up on the light so we can actually be sure, yeah, it's doing something and it's doing its job, but not much more. Okay, on the toms we could probably do the same thing. Um, let's go here to the intro section. Okay, and here too, I want to do it in a way that the light just barely touches up. So let's check the meter again. All right, let's go, uh, let's do it like this. Let's loop the section. <laughs> Can you see how the peaks get under control like that? That's uh, crazy. Saturation is key in order to get those peaks under control. And then later on, we will be able to get the mix louder. Okay. Okay, so much for that. Um, yeah. Now I want to go on with the vocals. They definitely need some compression and whatnot. Although, uh, be careful, these 
vocal tracks are already a little bit pre-processed with console emulation and tape emulation and a little bit of leveling compression just to emulate an analog recording chain. Because Brian recorded with a Behringer B1, just 100 bucks condenser mic, straight into an interface. And I wanted to give the tracks a little bit more mojo, a little bit more life before going into an actual mix. So we don't need additional console emulation and tape emulation and whatnot. And we don't need that much compression. As you can see, those are already quite level. So don't overdo it. I can't believe it. I've been walking circles for so many days. So here too, I want to put the compressor after the EQ. And these tracks really don't need that much EQ here. There's a little bit of lower mid-range dip might already be enough, but we'll see later on down the line. Then here, let's stick with the 1176. It's great compressor for pretty much anything. Um, again, slow attack, fast release, though slow with the compressor is really 1.2 milliseconds. That's pretty crazy. I can't believe it. I've been walking circles for so many days. I can't read this surface, can't make sense of this terrain. Oh, no, when I am lost, it's just the same. Okay, that might already be enough. So this is just kind of to, to add a little bit more oomph, a little bit more pressure to the vocals. Okay, now the same for these other vocal tracks. Can make sense of this terrain for so many days. Can make sense of this terrain. Okay. Then these, let's put the pro channel on post. So it's after the, the Esser in here. And now these vocals. Oh, no, when I am lost, it's just the same. Up, 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 up. Where are we? Over here. Like this and like this. When I am lost, it's just the same as when I'm found. I can't seem to take the safest way. When I am lost, it's just the same. Okay, okay, so we did a little bit of compression now and sounding pretty good so far. Uh, as you can see, our peaks are not as crazy anymore thanks to saturation on our channels. Um, ma, ma, ma. Should we go on a little bit with our drum bus? Hang on, let's give this a nice white color. Just like the tracks over here. I want to give the snare a reverb. Um, ma, ma, ma. So let's insert a stereo bus and let's call it snare burp and let's put it over here and then where's my inputs outputs oh man something's going on here safe lens so this one goes to the drums bus let's Turn this white as well, so we can clearly see this belongs to the drums. Okay, now snare channel, FX, 
no, not effects. Here, sends goes to snare reverb. Let's keep everything as it is. And now on the snare reverb, we're gonna put the reverb. Reverb 2. Oh, wow. Okay, this is new. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's do it. There should be a module also of reverb here. Where to go? Over there. Let's put it all the way up. Nah, come on. Like this. Okay. So we need dry mix down. We need plate. Let's shorten it about one millisecond. We definitely need a pre delay in there. A pre delay in the reverb really helps fatten it up. Yeah, I quite like how that sounds. Now, after the reverb, let's give it a little bit of a high pass filter. Tiny bit of a low pass filter. Okay. Should be good. Okay, now what I want to do, insert a new bus, let's make this drums parallel comp. No, nope, wait, put it over here. And let's send our drum bus there. Okay, and now on this one, I want to do the following. I want to boost top range and bottom range. Do it like this and like this. Yeah, something like that. And then bottom end. And then let's heavily compress this. So yeah, 1176 is good. Again, slow attack, fast release.
Okay, and now this we are going to fade in with the actual drum bus. Uh, let's turn it to pre fader. So now we can still uh, play around with our master drum bus fader without changing the input signal going into our drum compression. Okay, this way we already noticed the drums get livelier and punchier and brighter and thicker without really destroying anything. But the overheads uh, are getting too strong when we do it this way. So rather, I don't want to send uh, the whole drum bust here. Wait, can we no, 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 delete this? Here, delete send. Um, rather, I want to do it the other way so let's send the drum compression to our drum bus and now we are going to send each of these tracks to our drum compression this one goes to drum compression this one goes to drum parallel compression this one goes to there and there and there and there and that way we can control um, how much of each of these drum tracks actually goes into this compressor. So now we can turn down the overheads and room mics in there. So let's do like 60B for starters. Perhaps also the toms. Let's do a 3DB. Pretty sure the hi hat also needs to come down in there. So, yeah, now you know this is mostly kick and snare that's being compressed by this, but the other tracks still get a little bit of something extra. Okay, let me check this with my headphones real quick. Yeah, I noticed the kick drum lost a little bit of low end thump through the compression. 
Um, then what we could do, what I usually like to do, is I don't really boost the low end before the compressor, so that doesn't get too choked. In this way, the compressor is more so triggered by the top range click. Okay, and now let's add the compressor after an uh, in EQ after effects. So let's get the mix chain in here. I guess we could also do this in the FX chain because there's nothing in there yet, but I like to keep everything together as much as possible. So EQ, we could go with any EQ. I'm just gonna go with the trusty REQ. I don't know, I kind of like this one. Okay, let's do it rather like this, not like this. Okay, like this, this. Sometimes we need to play around a little bit until we get the results we like. Okay, wait, 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 I kind of want to check the toms again now. Yeah, toms need a tiny bit more work. Okay, and they need to come up in volume. No way. Let's let's uh, actually send them to here a little bit more again. And with the Toms 2, we need another EQ after the compressor. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, something like this. Okay, real quick. Uh, I want to cut out here these vocal tracks because in the original I also didn't put them in there. This a little bit of fade out. Okay. Okay, let's compare you know, with the previous mix. Okay, so that's it for this video. So what we did now is a basic compression setup. Um, we were just trying to get things in the ballpark with our compression. And so things are a little bit punchier, a little bit snappier while already getting the peaks under control as best as possible. So we don't run into any troubles later on down the line. So next video we will probably continue with a little bit of spatial effects on vocals and other guitar tracks and also some additional um, parallel compression and whatnot and then we are actually slowly but surely already getting into a pretty good decent standing mix so but we shall do that when we get to it and i shall see you next time